There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. This is an ebook haul. When I first started my channel, or shortly thereafter, I decided I was gonna haul ebooks. And then I got out of the practice because I was actually acquiring so few ebooks other than what was available to me on Scribd, compared to the radical change back to print books, because you know, you gotta have something to hold up for the video. But uh, I have acquired a lot of ebooks recently, so I want to revive the tradition and catch up going back perhaps six months. Most of them have been since the coronavirus pandemic kind of screwed up book mail delivery, and I have started to go back to ebooks. This is going to be a long video. I will break it up into uh, at least two parts if it's long enough. The one that goes back the earliest is a book that I had had my eye on since it first came out in 2017, and it finally I could get an affordable copy as an ebook, and that is Lucky Boy by Shanti Sekharan. She is an Indian American novelist. Lucky Boy is not her debut, I thought it was. Apparently, she's written more than one. I'm not sure if Lucky Boy was her debut or not, but I've heard really good things about it. I specifically remember how much Doris of Aldi Books loved it. I've been wanting to get it, I finally got it. Now, let's see. Opening two sentences <laughs> Preeti Patel was getting married, Kavya was wearing black. So I'm just going to continue to see what else I've got on my Apple Books, formerly known as iBooks, in terms of acquisitions in the last few months and weeks. If I've already read them or bailed on them, I'm not going to mention them here. At the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, several small presses, independent publishers, started giving out free ebooks hand over fist, so I gobbled them up. I vow that I will read as many of them as possible, and when I love the book, I will give them glowing reviews, because I got a lot of free books that way. Only one of them is on this particular platform, and that is Dreams and Stones by Magdalena Tully, translated from the Polish by Bill Johnston. I'm very interested in Polish lit and have barely read any. This was a freebie from the publisher, Archipelago Books. I don't like the copy for the synopsis. I actually hate it, but that's okay. I'm not going to prejudge the book based on how awful almost everything that is ever written on the back of a book makes me want to puke, and this is one. But basically, it seems to be the story of the emergence of a great city. That doesn't bode well for it being a Sean book, but it's a debut novel, originally published in 1995 in Polish, and apparently postmodernist. So that one doesn't necessarily sound like a Sean book. Let's see how it opens. <laughs> the tree of the world, like every other tree, at the beginning of the season of vegetation, puts out tiny, delicate gold leaves, which with time acquire a dark green hue and a silvery sheen. Anne Enright has a new novel out, doesn't she? She's an Irish novelist, and her new one is about an actor, and I have no interest in reading a novel about an actor. I just know I will hate it, I will bail on it, but her 2015 novel, The Green Road, sounded much more interesting, and I could... I keep using the word snatch it up whenever I find a book on sale. <laughs> Snatched it up for very cheap on iBooks. And it's a family story, the Magdalene family, four children and their mother. The name Anne Enright was very familiar to me, but I think for the longest time I thought it was familiar because she was a Canadian novelist, but in fact she's Irish. And she became much more distinct to me when I read and loved her short story called... Three Stories About Love in this anthology of short fiction by Irish women writers The Long Gaze Back, edited by Sinead Gleeson. So that's what made me much more alive to her work. But I wasn't interested in her latest one about the actor, and that's why I got The Green Road. I should let you know that unless the opening sentence or paragraph has some kind of standalone vitality, I don't automatically share it. The fact that a book opens with a sentence that doesn't qualify as having standalone vitality does not particularly prejudiced me against the book. Okay, that's it for iBooks. Let's go to Kindle. There's a whole swack of things on Kindle. Okay, this is going to be fun because every time you open an ebook in your Kindle library, it gets sorted in terms of which one was most recently opened. So I'm going to have to do some memory work and whatnot to figure out what's actually new. I think I'll start with an Indian novel that I bought on Kindle six months or so ago. It's called There's Gunpowder in the Air by Manaranjan Byapari, translated from the Bengali by Aruna Sinha. Originally published in Bengali 
in the year 2013, translation 2018. This is a very political novel, which I hope I end up liking a lot better than I ultimately did with Arundhati Roy's debut, The God of Small Things, which I pretty much hated. Sue me! But this one also deals with the Naxalberry movement, and I am actually now I'm not remembering whether that Arundhati Roy novel dealt with this particular movement, but a lot of the political and militant ferment. But this is set in the early 70s, and it's about the Naxalberry movement gathering strength in Bengal. It's a uh, novel about idealism and how it gets corrupted. Opening sentence. Long and slow, the jail siren wails. Booktube's own Charles Heathcote has written, I think so far, a trilogy of novels about a hilarious... I haven't read them yet, but I believe it's a hilarious, not spinster maybe, but a hilarious kind of eccentric middle-aged woman named Doris. The first one is Our Doris. I have a paper copy of that. But he put out a tweet months ago to say that all three of them were available for free on Kindle, so I snatched them up. So the other ones, and I'm not sure which is second and which is third, is Indisputably Doris and Doris Ahoy. I loved the opening sentence or paragraph of Our Doris, the first one. Haven't gotten around to reading it yet. I was hoping to do it for Read doris -a -thon, but I didn't get to it, but I will. <laughs> Here's the opening sentence of Indisputably Doris. <laughs> Our Doris is in peril of the Queen. That just cracks me up. <laughs> Gotta get to these. I think this was a blame it on Eric Carl Anderson. He would uh, hauled it or he wrapped it up. I can't remember which, but it's a historical novel called Upturned Earth by Karen Jennings. And it's set in South Africa in the copper mining district of what was then known as the Cape Colony in the winter of 1886. And it sounded really interesting. I am not a big reader of historical fiction. If it happens to be set back in history and it's literary fiction, then I get along with it. But otherwise, I'm not a fan. But this one sounded good. It's a bleak and depressing setting, and a new magistrate arrives in town. And it's a lot about the uh, mix of races and all the racism and oppression that was obviously in full swing in the late 19th century. Opening paragraph. Four men filled the cylindrical basket lift, their shoulders wedging them tightly against its inner rim. Above them, crossbars were just low enough to jostle hats as the basket tilted to left and right along its journey from the deck onto the pier of Port Nolith. Okay, this is uh, most of the ones that were being given away for free by Archipelago Books were somehow they were easy to easier to migrate into my Kindle than Apple Books. So this one is one of those, and this is a novel from Denmark, A Change of Time by Ida Jessen, translated from the Danish by Martin Aitken. I am hoping that Ulla will have some input on telling me whether I should prioritize this or what. I think originally published in Danish in 2015, and the uh, archipelago edition is from last November. It's about the life of a school teacher in r rural Denmark in the early 20th century after her husband dies through winding diary entries. First entry, January 3rd, 1904. I am on my way now. Everything is packed. I haven't even the time to write this. I shall continue later. Story of my life, girl! <laughs> another Archipelago Books freebie. This is My Kind of Girl by Buddha Dev Bose, is what I'm getting off the internet. Please correct me. Also translated from the Bengali by the same translator as the earlier one in this video, Eranuva Sinha. Buddha Dev Bose was an Indian Bengali writer. He died in 1974, aged maybe in his 60s. And this is a sensitive and vibrant novella. A modern-day Bengali Decameron. Well, that doesn't help me out too much since I've never read it. Uh, centers on four strangers who encounter each other. They're from various walks of life. There's a contractor, a government bureaucrat, a writer, and a doctor. Fabulous cover, don't you think? Originally published 1951. Translation, 2008. Archipelago Books Edition, 2010. Opening paragraph. A bitingly cold night in December. Four passengers sat silently in the first-class waiting room of Tundla Station. All four were covered from head to toe, concealed by their overcoats. But even in the dim light of that stark, dispassionate room, 
built and decorated in accordance with the Indian Railway's precise specifications. It was obvious that they were very different individuals, thrown together from different corners of society. Another archipelago books freebie, Dance on the Volcano by Marie Vieu Chauvet, translated from the French by Kayama L. Glover, originally published 2004, translation 2016, also archipelago books edition. Story of two sisters growing up in a culture that swings heavily between decadence and poverty. So what, what, what country? Oh, it's set in Haiti. How wonderful. Oh my god, it's 500 pages. I'm really interested in Haiti and I've read just a little bit of the literature. This is another one. I had forgotten that's what it was. So it deals with skin color and class. Opening sentence. On that June day, all of Port-au-Prince was at the harbor, joyously anticipating the arrival of the new governor. Another one from Archipelago Books, A Kitchen in the Corner of the House by... This writer has one name only, Ambai. Translated from the Tamil by Lakshmi Holstrom. 2019 in Archipelago Books edition. The earlier publication history looks too complicated. I think these might be short stories. Yes, 25 gem-like stories. On motherhood, sexuality, and the body. This is a Tamil writer. Which country are we talking about? Oh, I believe it means the district Tamil Nadu, but it's not. Yes, Tamil Nadu state in India. Okay, got that straight. Okay, this next one is really interesting for me personally. It is the African or South African writer, Brayton Breitenbach. He was, I, is he still alive? I don't know if I've heard anything about him for years. He is, good. Born in 1939. A white Afrikaner, if, if you don't know anything about South Africa, then... I will say he's a white Afrikaner, but there weren't any non-white Afrikaners. I don't think so. A white Afrikaner writer, born 1939, passionately, personally invested in the anti-apartheid movement, served time in prison, and went into exile. And I have been interested in him for decades. But when I was interested in him, I was not doing a lot of reading in the 2000s and the next decade. What are we calling that? The 2010s? And I collected almost all of his works secondhand off eBay or whatever. And then never read any of it, never got around to any of it, and liquidated my entire library. And that, those books were not ones I kept. So I was delighted to see this one available to me for free during this pandemic giveaway from the wonderful Archipelago Books. This is called All One Horse. I'm finally going to get around to my very first Brayton Brayton back novel. Nadine Gordemosh said of him, It is impossible to stop our ears against the excruciating power of what Breitenbach has to say. Now, I'm not one for cover blurbs, but that rings true. Okay, this is a collection of philosophical and lyrical prose pieces. I would rather read a novel, actually, but I've got it. But uh, here's the first paragraph of the introduction, which sets it up nicely, and it's a combination of his written prose pieces and his art. Is it his art? Yes, he's a painter as well. I don't think I knew that. So it starts with that, for me, as a North American, that off-putting pronoun that the Brits love to use so much, one. But anyway, it's, it's a beautiful paragraph. One has it in mind to put together a book which, when completed, reaching for completion, will consist of 27 minor pieces of writing accompanied by 27 watercolors. 27 because it is as good a number as any, and better than most, it contains the eternal nine, and this mind, seeking the wondrous mind on soiled paper, is still inked in with superstitions. When one is a blind ass walking on ice, it is as well to count the number of steps and to imbue these with a saving grace, if not some frozen significance. Okay, that sounds a little bit outside my comfort zone in terms of kind of a spirituality, but I don't care, I need to finally satiate my curiosity about Brayton, Brayton back, and I'm going to start with this volume. Okay, I don't know why these are coming in mixed up order, but I believe it was Sarah of Hardcover Hearts who alerted me in a group chat on Voxer some weeks ago that the novel by the Korean-American novelist Steph Cha, a 34-year-old who lives in Los Angeles, I believe, 
No, I don't know where she lives. She was born in Los Angeles. Just came out in October last year. Your house will pay. I've been hearing good things about it. I think it's kind of a mystery. <laughs> uh, which is not my thing, but it's about time I tried that again because I've been hearing really good things about this. I don't think this is a mystery, but it's about racial tensions in LA and two families. One is Korean American, another, the other is African American. And it's in the wake of a police shooting of a black teenager in Los Angeles. And that sounds fascinating. Okay, well, I guess I better go on to the second video. This is going to go long, so stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching.